I was coming back from Honduras and Stephen was coming back from Nepal. Um, we'd both been there for the summer, actually doing the same thing. We were repairing medical devices and working in hospitals. And one of the realities in Nepal that was especially um, kind of in your face was that you're getting this world-class education, um, but so many around you aren't. And the idea is that it's not just so that you can, you know, go and have a big house while they kind of sit and don't have medical care and whatever else. It's so that you can take what you've been given to turn around and help them. I was at his house and he had uh, these uh, devices, um, actually they were milk cartons in the corner of the kitchen and I asked him what they were for and he explained a little bit and said that he was, uh, he'd been asked by a respiratory therapist to design something that would be able to treat infants in developing countries. Basically the problem is you've got these premature babies and they uh, struggle to they struggle to breathe and if you think of their lungs like balloons, they have trouble inflating those balloons. And so by providing positive pressure, you can keep the balloons inflated, much like if you blew a balloon initially, like it's hard to open the first time, but once you've given that pressure, it's easier to keep it open. And so that's great, but the sicker babies need two levels of pressure, so it's like a low level, a high level. Essentially, it, essentially it's called pressure ventilation. So our challenge was, you've got a setup that can deliver one level of pressure, it's just a pipe in water, can you convert that into something that delivers two levels? And after that, we'd meet uh, several times a week working in his basement. We built um, all of these, starting with this. Uh, it was a Chobani yogurt cup. It didn't work, obviously. Then we got to the yogurt, and we slowly kind of moved up. These are turned out of um, PVC, and then now we're doing mostly 3D printed stuff. So yeah, and, and now we're at something that finally works, which is really exciting. Um, I'm a biologist and he's an engineer and uh, we both spend a lot of time in developing countries and so uh, we both have the same mission I would say because of those experiences and so our partnership was very natural. The impetus for this project was to design something that would be affordable and simple um, and save a lot of lives in doing so. CPAP is back in, but yeah, this, so this is like an add-on to CPAP to convert a CPAP uh, setup into a pressure ventilator which is a huge deal for these places in Nepal because they can afford CPAP, they can't afford pressure ventilators, and so anybody sicker than what CPAP can treat just dies. Uh, basically with our device, we're looking at a price point of about $25, and a typical bubble BiPAP setup will cost anywhere from $2,500 to a more expensive ventilator that would be maybe $25,000. So winning this competition uh, was really important to Stephen and I. It was the first thing that we'd won for our work on this device. It's like a validation of your device. And so, uh, for example, when I was presenting the device to a hospital in Nepal, and they saw that we'd won this, they were like, oh, wow, that's really cool. And I mean, they would have taken us seriously even without that. But like, it's, it's more validation. It shows that this group of experts has looked at your device and sees that there's potential, sees that it's worthwhile. Um, and, and that it's you know, worth these hospitals considering. So it, I think from that standpoint, it was really worthwhile for us. And so I was in Nepal this last summer and we were actually just helping a hospital get bubble CPAP up and running. So like the more basic step so that they can then switch and use this. And um, you know, seeing these little kids come in like actually noticeably blue uh, and then they get put on the treatment and after a few days, you know, they're pink, they're happy, they're moving around, they're smiling and stuff like, um, I don't know, that's amazing. That makes it worth it. To see an idea that started in, uh, in a basement um, being implemented to save lives around the world. Um, I think that's probably the best outcome of any research I can think of. Well, yeah, we'll bring all of the, the device stuff, but I don't know what their source of compressed air will be like, but it'll be, it'll look exactly.